let's talk about the difference between raster graphics and vector graphics. The three programs we're using will be Adobe Illustrator, which is a vector program, Adobe InDesign, which is both vector and raster, and Photoshop, which is a raster or a bitmap program. So what does that mean? Let's go back to the 1970s and say you work in a newspaper. So newspapers would have print photographers. Uh, they would be using film. So they would go out and shoot something for the front page of the newspaper on film and then come back and develop it in the darkroom. Then they would look at stuff. They would look at the film in uh, on a light box. This idea is what Photoshop has become. So uh, developing things in the darkroom is kind of the same thing as what we do in Photoshop. Now you can also make graphics in Photoshop, which we will be doing, but mainly Photoshop was created for photos. Now let's say we need an, an illustration created for this newspaper. So whatever has just happened, the big story, we need somebody to draw this or create some type of graphic. Um, they of course would create that um, by drawing it. Um, they would make sure that it was ready for print. Um, that, uh, you know, they, <clears throat> they would mark it up however they needed to do it. That is what we would consider Adobe Illustrator. Then we're going to take all of these different things. We're going to take whatever the reporter has written about this, and we are going to do something called paste up. We're going to take all of these different elements that we've created, and we're going to paste them up. And literally, they used to use paste. Um, to put them all together. That is what we would call Adobe InDesign. So that's kind of how you can think about these three programs that we will be using. So let's get back to what a vector and a raster are. So raster images are made up of pixels. They may all also call them bitmap images. So these would be an image or a photo. And of course, that would be Photoshop. Vector graphics are made up of, basically, when you think of vectors, think of math or wireframes. So that would be Adobe Illustrator. So if we had a very small graphic, this is taken off the internet, and it's this small. Um, if we blow that up really big, for instance, we need to put it on a billboard. We're going to be able to see each pixel because this is a raster image. It was created with pixels. So we see each one. It's like when you look at your face really close up in a magnifying mirror, you see each pore. A raster image, because it is made of math, you can make it as big as you need to make it and it will still be perfect. It is what we call resolution independent um, graphic. So a vector graphic would look something like this. I said they were called wireframes. They would have different XY coordinates of different points that, are, that have paths attached. So each of these little points would have the X, Y coordinates hit, uh, you know, hidden within the math of this graphic and a path between those. And then they would fill those things with different colors and textures and patterns. So that is how you create a vector image. And that's why you can make it as big as you need. So here is something I just took off of Facebook of another instructor. Uh, and it's a small photo because it was off the internet. If I start zooming in on it, you see it starts looking worse and worse because each pixel is becoming, um, it's each, each pixel is becoming blurry because that is a raster or bitmap image. It is not resolution independent. So let's talk about the basics of Adobe Illustrator that can help you. So stuff to know, um, when you are in Illustrator, if you click Alt and scroll your mouse, you can zoom in and out. I am on a PC, so you're going to hear me say Alt. That, that of course, would be Command in Macintosh. Um, you'll hear me say Alt because I am on a PC. Now, another thing that you can do that will help you is hold down your space bar, and you will get something called the Hand Tool, and then you can move all around. I'm going to show you this in Illustrator in just a second. Those are the two main things. If you learn anything today, learn those two because they will help you. Another thing that's going to help you is sometimes tools are hidden. So you can see here is our main toolbar in um, Illustrator. And if you're looking for a specific tool like the rounded rectangle tool, it's hidden underneath the regular rectangle tool. So you can either click and hold your mouse down or right click on your mouse and you will see um, the different tools that are hidden behind that. 
If you can't find a tool, you can click right here and it will show all of the tools. Do you see all of the tools have appeared? So if you can't ever find a tool, that is how you can find a tool. Just click right there on the three little dots. So let's flip over to Illustrator and let me show you this. So first things first, let's try this alt zoom thing. So if you put your mouse in the middle and you're just in the main tool, which is the selection tool, and you click on alt or command, you can just scroll your mouse and zoom as far in as you need to zoom. Now one thing that happens when you've zoomed really far in is sometimes you get lost. Uh, you can then click and hold the space bar and you see the little hand tool has come up. Now I can kind of move around. Another thing that may help you is sometimes you are zoomed so far in you kind of get confused. Where are things? You can always double click on this little zoom tool and it will bring you back out to normal. If ever you are using the hand tool and you kind of get lost and you can't find it, just double click on the hand tool and it'll go back to the middle. So let's use that again and zoom in. So Alt and scroll my mouse. You can see we must be looking at a bitmap or raster image because you can see each pixel. So let's talk about what I did. This is a raster image. This is a raster image that I got off of the internet and it's just a very simple flower. You can see when I zoom in on it, it looks bad. We're also getting some digital artifacts. So if I needed to use this in a billboard or something that was very large, it would start looking really bad. I've got a vector version of this. If I zoom in on that, if I zoom in on that, you can see that it looks extremely crisp no matter how close I get to it. In fact, if I go to the outline view, you can see those are the actual XY coordinates I was talking about. Uh, and that is the math of it. In fact, if I hover over one of these, you can see that's the XY coordinates of this anchor point, And it has a path between this anchor point and this anchor point. So it's math. That's why we can make it as big as we want. So I'm in the workspace called Essentials Classic. And most weeks you will hear me saying that Essentials Classic is what you should start with. Um, if I go up to Window and say Workspace, you can see I am in the Essentials Classic workspace. If you're following along with me, I'm almost always in Essentials Classic. So if you can't, if it looks different from mine, it's because you're probably in a different workspace. So you can use whatever workspace you want, but I would suggest Essentials Classic. You can also click over here and all of the main workspaces are right here if you need to flip back and forth between them. So when you're in a workspace, the two main ones you're going to need are properties and layers. And those are kind of right here in the Essentials Classic. All the other main tools are hidden here. If you click it once, they will open up, click again, and they will close. So different tools are right here. For instance, the character panel. Now, if ever you're looking for a panel and you can't find it, just go up to Window and you will see here are all of the different tools that you might need. Let me zoom this out and you'll get, there's a lot. So for instance, if we want, say if I want the Navigator window to open, I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see it kind of pops it up in various places. So here's the Navigator window and it wasn't part of Essentials Classic. I used to actually use this all the time. So you can move this around. You can click on it right here and it would close down to small. But one thing that happens is you may lose it. If you know that you've opened something and you want to use it again, just click it by the little top part right up here and you can drag it and dock it so that now it's going to always be there. There is a navigator and we can open it. So if you ever can't find something, one, you can just hover over it and it'll tell you what it is. Here's the Align panel. Um, but you can also go to Window Panel and look for it and then it will open it for you. And let's look at what I was telling you about the tools. So if you are looking for a specific tool, obviously hover over it, it tells you what it is and it's telling you that M is the shortcut for that. If I click my mouse down and hold it, you can see all of the hidden tools that are underneath it. And of course, you can also right click and it will give you the hidden tools. And if you cannot find a tool, just click down here. And here are all the tools available um, in this specific version of Illustrator. So that's just a quick getting started. I would take a few minutes to look around that and that will help you get started in Illustrator.